The future of work is going to look very different to how it looks now. Nine in ten jobs will require digital skills. The World Economic Forum estimates that 33% of future jobs don't even exist yet. Will we adapt when the time comes? Meet and Code is the first step for children and young adults into the world of technology and coding. Thanks to SAP and the network of TechSoup Europe partners, we support local nonprofits with small grants that let them organize coding activities for young Europeans. Meet and Code has been happening since 2017 during the EU Code Week. We started with 15 countries and by 2019 the initiative has grown to 25. More than 138,000 young people participated in nearly 3,000 coding events aimed at helping them to enter the digital world. The events are designed to show young Europeans how much fun coding can be and how it can help bring ideas to life. Simple to complex, beginner to advanced, B-robots to space probe. All can be covered during Meet and Code. You can code in a classroom, local library, or outdoors. The creativity of our event organizers is endless. From unplugged activities involving grandparents, 3D printing of coral reef, to bots playing football or bananas playing music. Coding is not just about computers. Meet and Code events are eye-opening for most of the participants. The children and young adults want to continue this new adventure and invest their time in learning skills relevant to their future jobs. 80% of nonprofits that organize Meet and Code events say that they have become more aware of the potential of new technologies. If you are interested in organizing coding events but don't know where to start, go to our website and find the inspiration library full of free of charge learning materials in dozens of different languages. Don't forget to follow our social media to get a grant for the next edition of Meet and Code. Join our community! A very warm welcome, everybody, to the kickoff event of the Meet and Code initiative for 2020. It's a European wide initiative that supports non profit organizations in the EU and beyond in enabling access to digital skills for the next generation. And I'm very glad to be your host in this virtual sphere for the next hours with a big thanks to all our project partners who made it possible that we are really now connected worldwide. We will be sharing a lot of insights and inspirations why digital skills are key, not only in enabling, but also in defining and boosting our collective future. And I cordially invite you to share your thoughts and your personal comments on our various hashtags, such as uh, the hashtag BMI Digitalk, as you can see here below uh, in the stream, and the hashtag, of course, Meet and Code, related to the event. And we also have third hashtag as we are in deep partnership with the EU Code Week. So the, the hashtag in this case is Code Week. In a minute, we will start today's event with a short discussion on how Meet and Code, beyond other means, is going to foster digital knowledge and creativity all over Europe. So I'm very delighted to introduce my uh, distinguished guests for the today's panel and event. I must say that State Secretary Dr. Richter very unfortunately uh, couldn't attend this event because he is now asked for uh, other duties uh, which don't allow any kind of um, appearance here in the studio, but he sends his kindest regards. And I'm very keen now to introduce to you Erwin Schwarzer. He's the head of directorate at the Department of Digital Society and Digital Policy of the Ministry of the Interior. A very warm welcome, Mr. Schwarzer. Thank you very much. And we also, with very warm regards, want to send our greetings to Brussels, where Fabrizia Benini is waiting for us. She's the head of unit digital economy and skills at the European Commission. We are very glad to have you, Fabrizia. And then there is Hartmut Thomsen. He's the president of Middle and Eastern Europe at SAP. Very good to have you on this panel. So thank you all very much for being part of this high level round. In the second half of this event, we will hear more about four outstanding meet and code projects from all over Europe, which I most warmly welcome with a virtual 
hug. So I'm looking forward to reconnect with all of you in Romania, in Slovenia, in Portugal and in Germany. And as you can already hear, all the EU presidency <coughs> trio partners are amongst the projects. So for the discussion, let's just tr straight, uh, start str straight uh, on end right away, Mr. Schwarzer. Why did the BMI, the ministry, your ministry, become a partner in Mead and Code in the year of the German EU presidency? Yes, uh, let's uh, put it this way. The Federal Ministry of the Interior is in the driver unit of digital transformation here in Germany, especially for public administration. And uh, secondly, we also want to promote a strong European society. And that's why we think that a cooperation is so valuable for meat and code and for us. Mm -hmm. And our common goal uh, of cooperation is to secure a better, greener, wiser future for all Europeans, big words, I know, <laughs> by using the power of modern technology. Mm -hmm. That's a good reason, I think. Mm -hmm. As you say, a better uh, future. Uh, we will come back to the question of tech for good uh, in a minute. I want to address my second question to Mrs. Benini. What is the connection between Mead and Code and the EU Code Week uh, concretely? Fabrizia is not there. Okay, no, so, the okay we are waiting for Fabrizia, no problem. But we are connected. I, I can see you properly, Mr. Thomson. I address my next question to you. Um, maybe before I drop the question, can you introduce yourself a bit and tell us what is the responsibility behind your leading role at SAP? Of course, I'm, I'm very pleased to do so. So as a president of, of, of Middle and Eastern Europe, uh, I oversee 29 countries. So I'm responsible for, for the operations for sales uh, and the development of our business in, in, in those countries. It, it, it contains Germany, of course, Switzerland, the Eastern European countries and, and, and CRS, so the Commonwealth of Independent uh, uh, States. Mm -hmm. So um, in this function, I'm, of course, responsible of hiring and developing great talents. So this is one of the reasons why the next generation is, is so close to my heart. Mm -hmm. And besides that, I'm, I'm the father of, of three children. So mm -hmm. I have teenagers at home. And I know uh, how important uh, sustainable uh, education is for all of them and to have the right skills nowadays. So this is really close to my heart. Mm -hmm. And I, have, uh, I mm -hmm. see it every day. Uh, just quickly, what are for you the right skills? that are needed uh, out there? I think the right skills depend on the, on the moment. So there are no right skills forever. So mm -hmm. we have to continuously evolve. So there's lifelong learning. So mm -hmm. when you think you have the right skills at the moment, that doesn't mean you have the right skills for the future. Mm -hmm. so, and, and talking about lifelong learning, as the digitization is g going on further and the digital skills are evolving, talking about the business sphere, what are the expectations upon the staff members and the requests? How, uh, how much are they changing from your perspective? I think the, the speed is, 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 is enormous. Yeah, mm. and that is, is a big problem for everyone. So people tend to think linear. Yeah, mm -hmm. we really struggle to think exponentially, but the development of technology is exponentially. That means the way how we, we approach things, yeah, we have to be open. And when we think back when we were children, so we asked hundreds of questions every day. So becoming an adult, most of the adults or people in, in, in my age, we asked less than, than, than 10 questions. So we have to have a future ready mindset. That means we have to stay optimistic, we have to stay <laughs> curious, mm -hmm. yeah? And we have not to stop learning, yeah? Mm -hmm. And we should not, shouldn't be afraid, yeah? That we, ha we have to have an experimental mindset. So some things, something we try can fail, but this will help us for the future. Mm -hmm. So we have, to, we have to question the status quo, yeah? Because what we know is there's only one constant, and that is change in the future. Nothing will stay as it mm -hmm. is. We will mm -hmm. see constant change on the technology side and in every aspect of, of, of our mm -hmm. life. Mr. Schwerzer, I expect you have a kind of an experimental mindset, otherwise you wouldn't sit in this stool and doing what yes. you are doing. Um, uh, asking and, and coming back, back to the clipping in the, in the beginning of Meet and Code, there it was said that nine out of ten jobs in the future require digital skills. Maybe you, from your perspective, mm. you can precisely define what skills are meant by that. 
uh, at least I try. First uh -huh. of all, I totally agree with Mr. Thompson. And I think we all experience day by day uh, that uh, the massive d development of digital life is having a great impact on skills. That's what is uh, said too. So there's a huge list of skills. I can't uh, tell uh, what all is, what's important, but most important is the way we learn has to be changed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's uh, we have uh, other possibilities uh, uh, with digitization about personalized learning. Uh, we have a better uh, uh, better support uh, by development of soft skills uh, we have, and most important is problem solving, collaboration, and creativity. That's important mm -hmm. and fun. I think somebody said it is in the in the uh, uh, teaser uh, and at the beginning. It's fun. It's yeah, fun. Yeah, it's it has to be yeah, fun yeah. because that's yeah, yeah. what drives uh, yeah. what drives people. Yeah, but that's interesting because we'll come to our projects later and introduce them. And their fun is one of the key roles in learning. So we'll come uh, back to that later. Let me uh, uh, ask about the question of digital sovereignty. This is a kind of a key word in your mm -hmm. ministry and into, uh, in the plans of the future. Can you maybe explain it a bit more what is meant by that? Yes. And why is it key for our citizens? It's key because more and more Germans are concerned about the dependence on, from the big players in digital technology. So the question is how we can, for example, use open source to ensure that uh, Germany as an IT location is strengthened. Of course, we also hold talks with Microsoft, Google and all the other big providers, but we want to become more independent when it comes to technology. So we try to, uh, uh, we look for new solutions and there are architectures where various providers come together and open source can be integrated mm -hmm. as well. That's mm -hmm. very, it's very important. So we currently are working in this direction, especially in the field of cloud comput computing, which mm -hmm. becomes more and more important, and especially for public administrations where uh, cloud computing is mm -hmm. not that popular uh, mm -hmm. at the moment. Now that's a very good question to Mr. Thompson in a minute, but I see Fabrizia Benini being back. Uh, very good to be reconnected with Brussels. So may I drop a, a short question uh, in between? to you. Why is the digital participation of citizens so key for our common future and why is it so important to start so early? For example, like um, meet and code, starting with six-year-olds. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Well, good morning, everybody. Sorry uh, if I only manage now. Uh, all my devices seem to having, uh, be having a bit of a fit, so I'm uh, connecting via a very small phone. Uh, so I hope uh, the, the video and the, and the audio is fine. It why is. should we um, join? Uh, why should we uh, be active in coding and in computational thinking from an early age? Well, we've just gone through, we are going through a pandemic where uh, it was clear that it is the online world, it is uh, the, the internet that can help us support uh, to, to continue working, to continue mm -hmm. studying, to continue learning. Mm -hmm. And this means that from all ages, we need to be able to master these tools. And especially in Europe, we need to be able to master them in the respect of, what, of our values. So therefore, we need to teach our young people uh, to access the internet in a secure, safe way um, that is respectful uh, of, of their rights and protects their privacy. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Fabrizia. Um, Mr. Schwerzer just talked about cloud computing and the importance of it, etc. Uh, coming back to you, Mr. Thompson, uh, SAP software, uh, we will find in almost any context, in administrative context, in a scientific context, in uh, business and educational context. So what do you expect from your various partners in order to boost dig digitization further? What do you expect? I think um, we have a, we have a, we have a really huge ecosystem helping us, uh, yeah, to get the best of our software for each of our customer, and that means also our partners have to um, invest into education and the right skills, yeah, permanently. Mm -hmm. So, the power of, of 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 innovation really can help to grow business, can. Uh, can transform industry, can, ha can help to lift the society and to sustain the environment. Yeah, and um, to, to really get such a results, yeah, 
we have to have a, an ecosystem helping us yeah mm -hmm. to get the best out of the the best benefits out of our software mm -hmm. so our our purpose as a company is to help the, the world run better and to improve people's mm -hmm. life yeah our promise to our customer is that we, we innovate to help them to run at their best Mm -hmm. we, we have a partnership in the whole initiative, Meet and Code, uh, from foundations, uh, uh, enterprises such as SAP, uh, the ministry, uh, so politics and administration. So how key is it, and this is an open question to all of you who wants to answer, how key is it that we have this kind of multiple Prisma-like uh, uh, construction here? Maybe Fabrizia, you want to join in into that question. Thank you. Uh, sorry, could you repeat the question? The question is, some... why is it so key that we have a partnership between business like SAP okay. and foundations and politics and administration, this Prisma-like partnership? Why is that important in Meet and Code? Well, it's, I, I think businesses are very much aware that they need digital talent. They need digital talent for now. They need to upskill the workforce. What we need to, to make sure is to, that we drive their awareness that mm -hmm. this uh, needs to be also a... Uh, 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 reaching out for the future generation. So you invest in your future workforce, if you want, mm -hmm. not only on your uh, clients or mm -hmm. in your present workforce. And the future workforce are young people in Europe. I mean, there is massive amounts of talent that can be developed. The results of Meet and Code, the results of Code Week show an, a massive interest. These people are going to be tomorrow's workforce. Mm -hmm. sooner actually than later. So we need to invest with them. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do it is that if we team up universities, uh, schools, businesses and NGOs, mm -hmm. we do that in Digital Skills and Jobs Coalition, which is a massive organization, has trained 7 million people, also grassroots. We do it in Code Week, you do it in Meet and Code. So I think it's a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. You talk so much about the talents. Let me just drop the figures on the table. Thanks to Meet and Code, around, and we heard it in the clip in the beginning, around 140,000 young Europeans have improved their skills, their coding skills, since 2017. In 2019 alone, Meet and Code had 56,000 participants with a result that was written there that 77% of all participants wanted to learn even more. So, Mr. Schwerzer, and also to you, Mrs. Benini, how do you read these figures? I think uh, it's really great success. Obviously, uh, Meet and Code uh, meets the demands uh, of uh, young mm -hmm. Europeans, and they have a lot of fun to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Benini, how do you read it? What does it well, say to you? Uh, you know, it says to me that, you know, <laughs> Code Week was 4.2 million people reached in 2019, okay? Uh, a number of uh, um, countries was 80 countries that, that were involved. So the, the interest is massive. So I'm very encouraged. But, and I think this is a big but, if we look at the picture of basic digital skills throughout Europe, only 56% of the adult population has got uh, basic digital skills. I mean, just being able to send an email. And only 31% mm. has uh, just above basic. So we have really a lot to do. And our future, our, it's our young people. So it's with them that we need to build with that enthusiasm to push those numbers forward. Because, I mean, this mm. is a digital society and it will be so ever more. We cannot have those that are able to access or know how to access and those that don't. We need to be mm -hmm. inclusive. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, this is something mm -hmm. we need to push for. And talking and thinking about this kind of inclusiveness, I come back to you, Mr. Thompson, and I want to, uh, to talk about uh, the constraints and the challenges that Corona created for a lot of educational institutions. Some of them ha have been doing a leapfrogging uh, uh, towards the futures, but others were struggling so much. In Germany, for example, we have a straight political framework that is not allowed for businesses to interfere with the educational work. So what do you think does it need maybe to broaden or to open up that businesses can be of more help uh, bringing digital education and skills in the future to that exclusive level as Fabrizia just mentioned? I think uh, there is still a way to go, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, on, on, on the side of the schools, we, we often struggle with the skills of the teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of mm -hmm. course, yeah, businesses can help 
but but actually yeah we should start where we see the biggest improvement and i think this starts with the teacher we have to train the trainer mm -hmm. or teach the teacher mm -hmm. this is what i experienced personally with three children being in home office and i was mm -hmm. as well in my in my home office so this is this is really a challenge yeah business can help a lot and uh, of course but uh, i think we should start with the root cause and the root cause is we have to equip all the the children with 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 with, with the digital access yeah to to be part of uh, of homeschooling mm -hmm. yeah but uh, it doesn't work if the teacher is not able to mm -hmm. to, to, to teach them uh, virtually and this is what i experienced uh, mm -hmm. several in several cases so on on the business side what what can businesses do of course business can help yeah and as sap with our um uh, csr strategy which is closely linked to, to our business strategy we are, we are really focusing on building digital skills and we're not doing this alone yeah we are coming from from different angles yeah so it, it's all about collaboration yeah between private public and the civil sector mm -hmm. yeah, this is exactly what what we are doing here today and what we are announcing today and i'm really happy yeah, mm -hmm. that we have bmi and we 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 have also um the network of of of, of tech soup and, and and stifter helfen, helfen, um so that we really can scale up and accelerate yeah we have to come from different angles yeah mm -hmm. this is nothing where i believe only the school and the university can solve yeah the more people participate the more parties we have yeah the faster we can close uh, the gap which is it's is ob obviously which obviously exists but i think the best is yet to come i'm very optimistic yeah. that, i can uh, i can hear it and i i want to drop a very sh for a very short time another subject on the table to you ai because we will experience ai also in the project well, how can we ensure for example now in the uh, responsibility of germany uh, in, in the eu presidency of the council um uh, how can we ensure a value-based ai what is important just quickly <laughs> <laughs> a very small a, question. This is, it's not a small question. This no. is a tough question. It's a yeah. tough one. So, this is a really tough one. How can we ensure? I think AI has an immense potential, and this is unquestionable with all the pro and cons which goes along with AI. I don't think that everyone uh, is aware of the potential and the importance of AI. But what we experienced during the Corona crisis is that it was not finally AI which helps us a lot. It was a human. Um, social intelligence yeah it was mm -hmm. a social distancing yeah and there were no trained algorithm who told us what we have to do now i think ai is, is really important what we should not overestimate that it is only ai which which helps the human mm -hmm. being to survive mm -hmm. yeah it will help us when we talk about repetitive task yeah it has an immense potential and uh, what what we should definitely see is hopefully that we we see more grants yeah to help uh, um businesses to, to further invest yeah i think we we, we have to do something in europe mm -hmm. yeah if mm -hmm. we don't do that in europe yeah we mm -hmm. will see that uh, all the big players in in, in the us yeah we will mm -hmm. take over the leading mm -hmm. position and it, it is in in the responsibility of, of of germany yeah the next few months to really bring this uh, topic mm -hmm. up uh, on 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 a, on, a, on, a, on a place where it need to be uh, Fabrizio Benini uh, asking you, um, what do we wish from Germany in this phase until December? What do you wish? I think we, we, we see you, but we can't hear you. We now need the emoji that is lip syncing. Okay. Yes, now Can we you hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Good. What do you wish from so Germany? <laughs> from Germany, we wish strong leadership. And that I think you can very well deliver to be able to bring uh, different views of different countries together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the challenge of Europe is that there are 27 member states. <laughs> there are nearly half a, half a billion people. We are very different, but we, we can be united on around certain principles. Um, you would just so, so uh, right in saying that AI cannot, uh, we don't have the tools, AI is not that developed to be able to solve the crisis that we are living through. But what we need to do, for instance, in AI is to develop frameworks 
-hmm. that around human-centric AI principles, mm -hmm. ethical principles, so that when we develop, we develop in the right way. Mm -hmm. And I think Germany leads very well in that regard. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Favita. Uh, we'll be coming back to you. I just want to summarize uh, this 20 minutes discuss discussion with the last question to you, Mr. Schwerzer. Um, thinking about Corona and the COVID pandemic, how, in, uh, to which extent was that kind of boosting your convictions that it is important and key to invest in digital skills and to, yeah, to develop this movement further? Yes, of course, uh, the pandemic, the corona pandemic reminded us all uh, once again uh, of the urgency of uh, mm. digitization. digitalization. Uh, we are not uh, that uh, far, have, have gone that far in uh, digitization of administration. <laughs> so <laughs> we... It's, it's what are you it working on the government? You were working on it. Yeah, you were working on it heavily. We felt that we, had to, had to, <laughs> we, we should have worked harder <laughs> in the past, so we uh, would have been uh, uh, more prepared, better prepared for, for uh -huh. this pandemic. Uh -huh. And this was a... Uh, we were, we uh, were awakened by the pandemic. That's uh -huh. uh, uh, what I have to confess. So, But uh, now we uh, even work harder to, to do so and to uh -huh. have a pu public administration which is totally uh -huh. digital, and uh, will help people mm -hmm. better than uh, it can do now. Mm -hmm. So uh, to all of the three of you, thank you very much till here. We'll hear more from you in a minute. I think we now have a very fantastic uh, um, structure. What we are going to do now, we will have short presentations from our partners in Germany, in Romania, in Slovenia, and finally in Portugal. These presentations will last about three minutes, will be held by the various participants, and then, and I, I like it very much, they will readdress their questions back to our panel members. Are you ready for that, Mr. Thompson? I of hope. course I'm ready. Of course you are. Course. Okay, okay. <laughs> so we will start, and we are starting with Germany. Oh yeah, I can see, I can see Germany uh, over there. Um, we are now connected with <laughs> Julia Freudenberg. She's the director of the Hacker School in Hamburg, combined with Jana Zeller. She's 19 year old and has been a participant of the school's courses and will start her academic studies uh, in IIT in autumn. And then we have Yannick Drexler. He studies business informatics at Hamburg University, and he's a so-called inspirer at the Hacker School. That m means he has been a participant himself, and he's now being inspiring the others. So we are now uh, keen on learning more about your project. So uh, the floor goes to JJJ. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Andrea. Uh, this is the only reason why we decided to be here, so have the triple J. We love well, it. Oh, yes. Hi, I'm Julia. I'm in charge of Hacker School. And what we do is trying to inspire kids for coding. Exactly, Mr. Schwarzer, what you said before, we're having fun doing this stuff. Um, we try to build bridges between companies and interest in the kids and young adults just to start coding. And the reason why we are here being, being supported by Meet and Code and being part of the Code Week is one of the most important parts of the year for us because this brings a lot of kids towards coding. And this is why we want to introduce one of our projects which will as will be held in, in the Code Week starting in October. Will you share, Yannick? Yes, of course. Thank you, Julia. Um, so we have created a talk and emoji course um, for the Code Week specifically. Um, where we basically take different emojis that have different looks um, and forms of their mouths and we put them into Photoshop and we change them around a little bit. Um, and after that, we use um, Amazon Polly, which is um, the same voice that's used in Alexa by Amazon um, to give sound to the emoji. And after that, we just match the two um, optics and audios together. Um, to get a nice result of a token emoji. And um, I think we have prepared a small clip of the final version of the project that would be amazing to show. I love hackers cool. Code week and meet and code forever. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, um, yeah, now I want to give over to 
Suyana, who is going to tell you more about um, what we're doing during the course. So as you can see, the result is really amazing. And that's something that I really liked about that course is you get something visual. It's not like you're coding and in the end you make an API request and you get some JSON data back. You can actually see what you have been doing. And it's also nice that this course gradually evolves. So we start off in lesson one learning what if and else is and about loops. And it's really picking up from a really, like you can start the course with no background. And if you have some kind of background knowledge, you can start at maybe lesson four and get really into how to use the API that Poly provides and to use like top of the state of the art um, and machine learning and uh, voice. Uh, <laughs> Voice AI. Voice AI. Thank you. Um, and that's really something that I really enjoyed doing. Yeah. Very much like that. Can I readdress a very short question to you, Jana? Because we need yes. female power in AI. Yeah, there are a lot of jobs outside waiting for for all of us as as females also. So, uh, what about the female power at the hacker school? Did you go into a girls c uh, course or did you um, do it with other guys or how did it work? Uh, I went to the hacker school with other guys, even though like the girls hacker school only started recently. When I started, there was no girls hacker school, but I really enjoyed the initiative that is taken here. Um, and I would have liked to participate at a girls hacker school if I would have had the chance. So do you think about becoming an, an ambassador yourself and ins inspire in the next step? Yes, sure. I have already inspired girls hacker schools before. Mm. So um, I have already taken that step. I can feel it. I can feel it. You brought a question to our panel. So maybe who wants to start? Maybe Julia, you also have a question uh, addressing to our panel? Yes, of course. To Mr. Schwetzer, please. Because I would wonder how the political framework would have to change to well, make our job easier to connect or to, to integrate companies into the, the educational surroundings, even on a volunteer base, what could you do to help us to reach more kids? Oh, can I take this question and first address it to Mr. Thomson? That's very interesting, what he would expect, and then bring it to Mr. Schwerzer. So first okay. you, Mr. Thomson, and then you. Uh, yes, let me, let me answer the question. I think for me it's, it's, it's pretty easy to answer because we are <laughs> already supporting you. Yeah, so I think there is nothing we need yeah, to do further because we understood how important it is for our business. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think yeah, it, 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 it goes along with how tech savvy are really the, 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 um, the leader of a company. Yeah? Do they understand how important technology is for their, for their future? And for SAP, we cannot survive. Yeah? We have to invest into mm -hmm. the next generation. Mm -hmm. yeah? And we cannot wait until they start working at SAP. And because of that, we are heavily in, in investing through our uh, CR, uh, CSR um, in, in um, meat and code, for example. Yeah? So this is something which is, is it's, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Schwarzer, what should change? Yes, first of, all, uh, first of all, we are glad to have your support. And I think uh, we have no choice. We have uh, uh, to work together mm. uh, to, uh, to reach uh, these goals. And so, uh, as you former said, uh, uh, the, the schools and the teachers have to be, in, especially the teachers have to be enabled. I was responsible, I was working for a Ministry of Education for a couple of years, and I know what you, what you, uh, what you said. First of all, we need teachers that are able uh, to uh, to deal with digitization, and uh, there are big efforts to uh, we have to uh, to, to, to to do uh, so that we reach this goal. And I think that's the most important thing uh, we have to do. People in schools have to, to realize that there's no way out of digitization. This, mm -hmm. you know, in German we say Neuland, and uh, the internet is there and it never goes uh, goes again. So uh, it, uh, we have to, to deal with it. So that's, I think, it's very important. Mm -hmm. um, Jana, I think you have a very short question, maybe two, and then with a very short answer, and then we come to the next country. Do you want to drop it? Yes, I have yes. a question from Mr. Thompson. So we can see that uh, like IT is rapidly changing. We see new concepts, especially in AI, emerging. But on the other hand, school and like changing the curriculum mm. takes a lot of time. Mm. How do you think could companies bridge that gap that is there? How could companies maybe start to bring their projects, their state-of-the-art projects, into schools? Um, it's a good question how, how, how mm -hmm. early 
really businesses should start. Yeah, what we are doing on 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 SAP, and I will share it with you. We are working together with uh, three thousand eight hundred uh, educational institutions worldwide in one hundred and and thirty different countries, and and we help them to permanently refresh their curriculum. Yeah, I think this is something where where we have constant change and. Uh, this is in, in the responsibility of, of, of companies to really um, have a look on what you can contribute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is for me, it's a, it's a permanent process. And we're working really closely with our university alliance, yeah, to, to help the universities and also help schools, yeah, to have the right um, curriculum to, to educate the latest uh, technology. Thank you very and much. That help, and that will pay back to us as well as a company mm -hmm. Because mm. we are we are hiring people from university. Of course. Yeah. Mm. This is, is so vital for, for our success mm. as a company and, and, and as a market leader in, in technology. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. Thompson. Thank you very much, Germany. Um, we see you back later. We now switch to Romania, and I want to introduce to you Miruna Pop. She's in the upper cycle of high school, grade twelve at the let me spell it right, Colegio Nacional Ioan Slavici in Satu Mare, which is the, this is the last grade b before you can apply uh, for university. And her class profile, not surprisingly, is intensive mathematics and computer science. So, Miruna, we are looking forward to your presentations. Big hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, greetings from Romania, everybody. Thank you, Andrea, and thank you all for the opportunity of participating to this event. It is truly an honor. In 2019, I have joined the Meet and Code event with a project called Tech Save the Planet, which was conceived by me and achieved by working with our school's robotics team, coordinated by our great, great computer science teacher, Kovar Simea. To briefly explain you how it worked, we intended to create a system for measuring the degree of air pollution using our Arduino Uno microcontroller and various sensors as gas sensor, air quality sensor, dust particle sensor and UV sensor that fulfill these fu functions. After coding and testing the system, we work with the Environmental Protection Agency in our town to set up the system made by us, the students, for a period of three days in three different places in our county. With the help of the sensors, we managed to collect hourly data that was analyzed with the help of specialists from the Satomare Environmental Agency. Um, Based on the results and analysis, we had a clear view on the degree of air pollution in the respective areas. A personal feedback is how much I enjoyed comparing the graphics that represented the degree of air pollution made by our Arduino system and by their professional system. Trust me, it is amazing to see how the lines of the graphics follow the same trajectory, which did nothing else but prove us that the small system made in our computer science lab gave us the same main information as a very complex one, a fact that made us feel very proud. Please take a short look uh, at our project. Here is the Arduino microcontroller, uh, some gas sensors, an SD card where we store the data, and a timer. And that's it, quite small but so effective. In the second part of the project, we propose the elaboration of an improvement plan in order to change the lifestyle of the inhabitants in order to protect the environment, which we had also shared in an article in the local media. Respectfully, I would like to acknowledge the fact that we were determined to do tech for good directly by the Meet and Code event, as it was one category option for the season that just winked at me and end up in this great project where we learn how easily we can help our planet by doing our favorite thing, coding. I would also like to shortly add that two years in, the row, in a row, the Meet and Code event represent, represented a great motivation for me to code and do robotics and made me realize that this really might be what I'm going to do as a profession in the future. So I encourage all the pupils that have this opportunity not to miss it. It really can be a life-changing decision. Thank you all. Oh, I have goosebumps now. I have goosebumps <laughs> <laughs> listening to you. What do you want to do in the future, Miruna? Um, I am planning to do engineering, most probably, because uh, as I learned in the Meet and Code events, it is combining physics and uh, coding, which are my two passions. And now I find out, I, I found it out that I really want to go in Great. that field. Great. You also brought a question to our panel. Maybe you can share your question with us. 
Of course. Uh, I would like to mention that I have gained some information about the initiative of Digitizing Europe, which is part of the Together in Europe project, and I deeply appreciate it. Therefore, I am curious about how could a pupil or a student from a country like Romania contribute to this big movement, whether it is inside the educational system or the entire mass of the country or even Europe, as mm -hmm. we know how important the digital skills are in one's intellectual mm -hmm. evolving. I think this is a fantastic question for uh, Fabrizio. Savinini. Do you want to answer it, Fabrizia? Sure. And uh, really, congratulations, Miruna. You are very, very inspirational. And think, you know, with people like you, I think we uh, we are on the right track. Um, Thank you very much. Women, because we need to inc to increase the number of women that take up STEM studies, the number of women mm. that become ICT specialists. We are dramatically behind. So what is it that a young person can do? Well, if you know how to code like you do, um, all you need to do is take over, create a uh, Code Week event. You just pin it on the map, you take it over and, uh, and let your imagination run free. So we really encourage you to do that. Uh, if you don't know how to code, and that, uh, but you are interested, it's something that uh, um, stirs your fantasy, then all you need to do is go to the Code Week uh, website, there you'll find the resources to attend workshops. And um, the, the, the fun thing is that in this year's uh, event, uh, Code Week event, uh, we will have an Ode to Code, <laughs> which is actually a little game taking um, the possibility to uh, uh, change uh, the Ode to Joy and, and coding it differently um, and using your skills, but still using something that, uh, that brings us all together. So now really go to the website, there's plenty. It will guide you through, it's self-explanatory. Uh -huh. Just a quick question back to you, Fabrizia. Um, how important it I is it that we have entrance doors for all levels of pupils and kids and youngsters, somebody who d doesn't know anything or others that are very advanced and want to progress? How important is it to keep it very diverse? It's absolutely key because, you know, we need to capture the attention of really everybody. For instance, Code Week, this, uh, this year and also last year, the focus is on teachers because we need to make teachers super teachers. We need to empower mm -hmm. them to make them confident. You have excellent teachers, but perhaps a little bit mm -hmm. hesitant on the digital side because as people my age, we, we, we were not. We are not digital natives. So we need mm -hmm. to focus on the teachers, mm -hmm. also focus on the young people, and do not forget seniors, because mm -hmm. there's no way, shape or form, mm -hmm. that we're going to mm -hmm. leave uh, you know, a strong part of the EU population behind. I, the Digital I, I, yeah. Skills and Jobs Coalition does that. I had an hour in Scratch and I adored it. It was for young kids, exactly. uh, six years old, and I loved it. So thank you. Thank exactly. you very much. Big thanks to Romania. Yep. We are now switching to Slovenia. Katja Ozliak is waiting there. She's living in Ljubljana. She's a researcher. She's a founder of the Institute for Digital Education, SAC. That's the name of the institution. It means everybody in English. And she's the EU Code Week Ambassador. So we are very much looking forward to your presentation, Katja. Hi, Andrea. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So, Slovene code, uh, uh, code Week community, communities for this year preparing a series of events. Uh, we call it Code for the Community. So, students there will be able to learn HTML while writing online poetry, an example. Also, they will learn how microcontrollers work, how to become masters of Scratch, and how to use digital technology creatively, safely, and of course, with some social uh, or a lot of social responsibility. Um, three NGOs have joined the forces uh, to develop this online uh, workshops. One is the uh, already mentioned Institute USAC, uh, then the Institute Citizen D and the Association Council, uh, who all in their work already call for the creation of digital solutions with inclusive and democratic effects for the community. So um, the so far planned webinars from our series are uh, already mentioned HTML poetry, where students will uh, learn how to code HTML uh, in a creative environment during uh, while writing online poetry. 
uh, today we will also learn about microbits, um, learn how to fly in scratch. They will mm -hmm. uh, older, a little bit older students will learn something about online privacy and uh, so on. So as you could hear, uh, we have developed a diverse selection mm -hmm. of courses. Uh, we think they are complementary. Um, we included different topics and angles for the, which we believe that are necessary for the development of the literacy for the digital economy and society. Mm -hmm. Um, what I think it's important to highlight that we try not to focus only on the technical skills, but also teaching the students about the digital media system, importance of ethics and social responsibility, because we believe that this is actually the way towards more empathy in our digital everyday lives um, and a way to a better digital future. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's it. A short presentation of what we are planning in Slovenia this year. Just one quick question back to you: How far yes. is fun a key point in what you do? Fun uh, from a pupil's <laughs> perspective and the teacher's perspective. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, definitely. I must say that always in these workshops, uh, there's a lot of fun and laughing because we try to uh, to learn by doing. So we are allowed to make mistakes, ask questions. Uh, um, so yeah, that always uh, is mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. You brought a question on our table for us uh, to our panel. So what would be your personal question? Yes, yeah, so my, uh, uh, one of my questions goes to Mr. Thompson. Uh, I would like to ask you, Mr. Thompson, what would SAP recommend to other businesses to support digital education in their regions or in their countries, an example? A well, very good question. I, I, I like very much. So, I, Firstly, I would say that it's the best interest of, of each company to invest in education. Every company's success depends on the skills um, of its employees. However, each country is different. The needs and the demands in education may vary. So the way we go at SAP is it's, it's, it's pretty simple. So we, we, we ask our local colleagues because they know much better than when we do on a regional or a global level what skills are really needed in, in a certain country. Then they research and identify the best NGO partners that can collaborate with us. Mm -hmm. And also we think about where our colleagues can contribute best with their skills and expertise as coaches, as mentors, as teachers. I think it, 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 it's pretty simple. It, it, it looks simple. It is not, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. because you have to have the right people, as always. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, mm -hmm. you have to keep in mind that not every country is the same, yeah, mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. the same approach fits everywhere. But mm -hmm. this is sim something where I think it, 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 it might work in 80% of, of the cases. Mm -hmm. Talking diversity uh, and coming back to you, uh, Katja, would you have another question uh, and looking at Europe and the diversity in Europe, we maybe can drop to uh, Fabrizia Benini? Yes, uh, 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 question uh, to you, Ms. Benini. Um, we hear sometimes scholars that are criticizing current models of teaching digital literacy. Uh, they're criticizing the part that uh, digital literacy education is mainly focused on technical skills and production of digital technology. And instead, they suggest an educational model that would combine, in example, digital and media literacy to foster more inclusive, more diverse, more empath empathic and democratic participation in today's society. So uh, I wanted to ask you, Ms. Benini, how is the European Commission mm -hmm. approaching those challenges? <laughs> Great question. Well, <laughs> it is a very good question. Um, and, you know, I feel a little bit frustrated when I give this answer. In fact, uh, school curricula and what is taught in schools uh, is not ruled by Brussels. It is each government that decides what must go in, what, t what pupils must learn. So what is our role? Our role is to put forward, uh, to explain the problems, to explain the challenges, to give figures. Uh, and that we do. We um, each year um, issue and publish the Dig Digital Economy and Society Index, which is a very detailed mm -hmm. um, Eurostat-based report with figures that looks at every aspect of uh, digital in our societies and our economies. And in basic digital skills, the figures I mentioned before are very staggering, 56%, 31%. Uh, that, that have basic and intermediate skills. So 
much to be done because mm. when we talk about basic digital skills, that includes the capacity to know who sends you an email, to be able to look at the, the URL address and understand whether that is legitimate, that whether that is it's something that you can relate to. So the basic digital skills include those sorts of uh, skills that you mentioned because they are necessary, in my view, to become a full citizen, to mm -hmm. use your mm -hmm. rights and to participate actively. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. encourage it, we set targets, we spend money, we talk to everybody mm -hmm. that will listen. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, member states need to make that decision themselves. Mm -hmm. And some do, some listen, some are excellent and are front runners. Others have perhaps a bit more challenging in that, but we are confident because um, mm -hmm. computational thinking is now compulsory in 19 member states. And when we think about uh -huh. computational thinking and coding, well, that opens the door beyond mm -hmm. that basic digital skills to at least intermediate level. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to get there with the help of the sounding board that uh, events like this can produce. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Schwarza, uh, when she said, uh, Fabrizia, she's confident, you were kind of smiling. <laughs> I couldn't read your smile. So uh, what are you thinking on this topic? Yes, uh, first of all, I have to say uh, I totally agree uh, uh, with Fabrizia and uh, we are listening in Germany and in Berlin we are listening as well because mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, as a federal state, uh, we have to convince uh, the, the <laughs> our federal states to do so. So that's uh, our, uh, our uh, task uh, to give a framework and to, to, uh, to translate uh, what comes from outside from the EU and to bring it uh, to the federal states. Mm -hmm. You know, the school system system is federal in Germany, so uh, it's the only way we can deal with uh, these problems. Mm -hmm. So that's maybe also a reason by, because why we have different, uh, uh, different approaches in, in Germany, but I think that can also be a mm -hmm. good uh, thing to have different approaches because you can compare mm -hmm. and use the best practices then at, at the end. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are not on the cutting edge of the uh, uh, evolution, uh, but uh, we are listening and I think we will get better mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much uh, to all of you. Thank you very much to Slovenia. And we are now coming to our last project or initiative uh, and coming back to our trio partner, Portugal. Uh, we are now connected with Mafalda Furtado de Mendoza. She's responsible for partnerships at 42 Lisboa and to Francisco Martins. He's responsible for finance at 42 Lisboa. So the floor is yours. Thank you so much for having us. So our project um, is a school that's called 42, and actually it's part of a big network. The first school was founded seven, seven years ago in, in Paris uh, by a French businessman that uh, really see, saw that that was a need, a huge need for a different kind of uh, training for the, the amazing tech talent. So he, he really uh, made a, um, he, he, a disruptive uh, pedagogic model for, for, for the project. So uh, the model has such a success that he spread it for uh, 20 countries and um, uh, we, 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 we discovered the school uh, when we visit one in the United States and a group of we are a group of five friends that decided to, to, to quit our previous jobs and now we are founding this school. We founded the NGNO and, and, um, and we are setting the project here in, in Lisbon. Uh, so the, the, the Francisco later will, will tell us a, a bit more about the pedagogic model that's where the innovation is. Uh, but the school has two, two to different uh, mindset. So the first of one is that you can come in and we don't need a diploma and you don't need to have background in in, in uh, programming. You just need to be motivated and to to um, apply the, our our process. So the, the, the intention is to have the project open open for everyone. And also uh, one big part. One big rule of the school is, is that there are no tuitions. Uh, so each country is responsible to secure the funding uh, for, for uh, establishing the school. So we, we have here in, in, in Lisbon amazing corporate partners and uh, individual benefactors that believe in the project and uh, are supporting financially the project. 
so the students can't uh, don't pay anything so it's open to everyone and Francisco can talk a yeah. bit more <laughs> yeah so just hi Aaron, good morning so just to give you an idea of the pedagogical model the school is very different it's a, a, a physical school so you cannot do it remotely um, and it has like three big pillars the first one is that there is no classes, no schedules, no teachers, nothing like that. So everyone is supposed to learn at their own pace, at their own uh, uh, level. They are supposed to learn with one another. Okay? And the school is open 24 hours, seven days a week. It never closes, not even during Christmas or New Year's Eve. So it always has to be open so that students can go there whenever they want to work on their project. The second feature I will highlight is that it's entirely project-based, so it's not hypothetical driven exercises. It's very much each level. It plays like a computer game. There's 21 levels that you have to do to complete the school. Each level is a series of, of applied projects that you have to solve to move on to the next level. Okay. Some of these also include internships to be even more practical. And the third feature I would highlight is a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, uh, characteristic, which is Whenever you finish a project, you are graded by your peers, you know, so you are set by your peers, which is very different from the usual models. Great, great, that's it. Just one quick uh, re-question. The age frame, the people you address, is starts where and ends where? <laughs> Yeah, so there is no upper limit, you know, so everyone <laughs> okay, I can come. Uh, the <laughs> minimum well. age is 17, 18. Okay? Ah, okay. That's the only requirement. Okay? After okay. that, and we do get a huge variety of ages, actually, which is a very interesting mix. Mm -hmm. Very interesting that you focus so much the gaming industry to learn from the gaming industry for what you want to do in education. What is your question to our panel? So our question is about universities that are obviously very important structures of society. Sorry, uh, but they are back. complex uh, entities and sometimes they are adverse to change. The pedagogic model has not evolved much. Uh, the amphitheater is still the basic tool everyone goes to the classes. Uh, what do you think are the main challenges that tend to block the innovation in the universities? And should there be policies to promote innovation or is it the responsibility of uh, each school? Well, that's a big question too. So <laughs> open the stage for everybody who wants to jump in. Uh, I look to all of you. Maybe I go first. You go uh, first. Yeah, if you don't mind. Please. I, think I, I, asked, I want to, to, to answer your first question. I think it's, it's about people at the end of the day. It's about the teachers. Yeah? Yes. So it starts with the people. It starts with the mindset. Mm. Yeah? So you, you okay. said it's, 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 it's everywhere, the, the, the old stuff when you, when you go to the university. Yeah? You, you said it uh, so, so rightly. Yeah, and there's only one person who can change it. That is the person who is teaching the people. Yeah, so it, it starts with the teacher. Yeah, and as you described, and I really, I'm amazed what, what you have uh, established in, in, in Lisbon. Yeah, and who made it happen? It is you. Yeah, you decided to do it differently. No one else. And this also applies to all the university. Yeah, it has to start from, from the top. It has to start from the people. And not from the students. And can I address the second part of the question to you, Fabrizio Benini? Uh, the question was, should there be policies to promote innovation? What do you think? Or is it in the responsibility well, of the school? I think uh, there should be policies to promote innovation. In fact, there are policies to promote uh, innovation in universities and tertiary education. I'd like to defend a little bit our very good technical universities throughout Europe. We have mm -hmm. top quality, uh, top quality um, uh, schools uh, that uh, that teach mathematics, that teach uh, STEM studies, um, and 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 perhaps uh, you know it, there is not so much awareness of that. Uh, the the policies that support innovation in the tertiary um, educational system from Europe are many. Um, I can just quote, there is the Universities Alliance Initiative that brings together, creates bigger universities. We are, you know, we are used to talk about MIT, Harvard, Oxford <laughs> and Cambridge. Those are massive institutes and with massive amounts of money. Perhaps our, let's say, town universities that we have developed in Europe uh, through centuries old tradition are smaller. So we need to bring them together. Their, their alliance uh, pitches in. 
There's also the, for instance, something very practical, the digital opportunities traineeships. It's an initiative that allows universities to uh, select uh, students that are willing and uh, to go into traineeships into uh, businesses like SAP. And we make the match in a platform and the, the commission will pay for that, for that traineeship. And so for the benefit of both the business and the students, mm -hmm. there are also, if the member states will give us the <laughs> blessing for the budget, massive support for um, uh, uh, courses and, uh, and master courses uh, on digital technologies through the Digital Europe program. This is something that should come up very mm -hmm. soon. So really, there is great awareness that we need to be to have stronger universities uh, with a bigger critical mass that are able to impact worldwide. Mm -hmm. But make no mistake, the level in Europe is good. Uh, is good. Yeah. OK, so crossing our fingers for the decision making process. And um, the first question I have now, I, I thank you all so very much uh, from the project partner side, is to all three of you here in the panel. What is, I have two questions. One question is, what was striking you most listening to these projects? And the second question is, what of what we all have discussed within these 60 minutes is for you the most important question we should go on chewing on it? So these are the two questions I have for the moment. Mr. Thomson, Mrs. Benini, Mr. Schwarzer, who wants to go first? I could start if you like. I, I hear you thinking. I hear you thinking. <laughs> Mr. Schwarzer, you go first. So I try. The so most exciting for me was uh, really the passion of all participants in the various projects. Mm -hmm. It's v very impressive to see this and uh, it gives a good feeling for the future of Europe that so many young people are coding and uh, discussing the problems and solving problems and try to contribute to mm -hmm. our societies. I think mm -hmm. that's uh, mm -hmm. was what's really most impressive. So thank you for all of us. Mm -hmm. And as a wish of uh, uh, maybe an answer to your second yeah, question, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we all have to ensure that all young European citizens in all countries will have the same chances to do this. I think there are differences between uh, member mm. states and regions as well, mm. and social problems mm. we have to deal with, mm -hmm. especially in the uh, COVID pandemic. It was obvious that uh, pupils, that children who live in uh, uh, with parents that are not that skilled uh, as, as others, they have not the same advantages as other people, as mm -hmm. other uh, other children have. So I think we have to have a look on this and ensure that all the children, all the young people, all the young men and women have the same chances. That's a big task. Okay, yeah. we put it on the list. Yeah. Um, Mr. Thomas and Mrs. Benini, your thoughts on what was striking and what do you take as a task home to your working desk? Yeah, let me start with the first question and I can only echo what Mr. Schwerter said. Uh, I was really impressed by the passion, by the optimism of the young people. This is amazing. And if they can do uh, what we have seen today, everyone can do that. I think mm -hmm. this is a, it's a great message and I was really impressed. And I, I have to admit, and uh, yes, my, my, my wish for the future is um, that uh, we should not stop. No one can, um, can stop investing into the right skills for the future, independent on the age. Yeah? Even if, uh, if you're older people, yeah, you have to invest into the right oh skills, this independent on the age, and everyone is responsible. So, we have to take our own responsibility. Mm -hmm. yeah? This mm -hmm. is nothing where I can think, oh, uh, nobody takes care of, 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 of my education, then I don't care. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. is a personal task for, for each mm -hmm. and every one. And I, was, what I can only echo again, what I have seen today was so exciting uh, for me that I think everyone can do so. <laughs> Thank you. Fabrizio Benini, your thoughts? Well, uh, obviously, I'm impressed. Obviously, I'm encouraged by each and every uh, each and every project, and really, it's, uh, the dynamism, you know, the drive, the the power. I think it's uh, I think it's incredible. Um, what I would like to see is a multiplier effect. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, a multiplier effect, it means that you can't just stop with your projects now. You need to go online and you need to create an event yourselves, another mm -hmm. one to involve other people. Because by mm -hmm. now... I think we lost your voice now. We are lo I, I, we, I can't hear you in the studio. I see you. Can you, can you hear me yes, now? It's, now it's better. Okay, I'll, I will, I'll speak closer. I just said... Uh, you are uh, now you have achieved these projects and you are able to go the next step to influence other people because if you, we do need mm -hmm. a multiplied effect uh, and that is a message for all three all three of you mm -hmm. but, uh, if, if they would do that inevitably through the school 42 because they will create a, a, an environment of their own but Miruna and, and Yannick and the others really go out and multiply do an event and special word of thanks to SAP, because I think that businesses that are active and that are able to bring their, uh, their, their witness, their testimony and their action. In the Fabrizia, we thank you so much. Thank you for your thanks also. In this very last minute of this event, uh, um, I want to give the voice back to our projects. And I want to uh, address a task to you. Please imagine, look into the crystal ball. You can decide if it's in five years or 10 years time. We start, I would say, now with Portugal, go all the way back, Slovenia, Romania, and end uh, uh, then with Germany. So what do you see in five or 10 years time talking about digitization and digital skills just your personal utopia please share it with us we start with portugal yes i like to see kids uh, in the playgrounds at the school instead of playing with the nurses and, and the doctors they are playing with the data mining engineers and the software uh, developer, developers and the teenagers are talking about uh, not only becoming the great football player but the craziest hacker uh, in society <laughs> Okay, <laughs> when is it? In five years or ten years' time? Let's say ten, maybe okay, ten. Let's say ten. You work on it very hard. Okay, thank you very much. We are coming to Slovenia. What do you see? Yeah, I, I see in ten years that uh, we'll have a nice rounded curricula in all our schools mm -hmm. where all kids will be teaching digital skills, but this will be like balance, technical skills, humanities, social, uh, social responsibility, uh, very diverse, uh, uh, very ethical. So this is my hope and what I believe the future of digital uh, education will look like. Katya, thank you very much. Looking into the crystal ball in Romania, what do we see? What do you see? When? Uh, in 10 years' know. time, I really hope that the whole Europe will end up being fully digitized. Uh, and maybe we could see that in schools uh, by not using paper anymore, but um, <laughs> digital <laughs> instruments. Um, and most important, it would be that uh, the digital world would be accessible to anyone. And I really hope that it will help children without opportunities to have easier access to education. Thank you very much, Miruna. And we sum up with the vision of the hacker school in Hamburg. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Then I go for five years because 10 years in digitalization is an That's eternity. <laughs> so what is my vision? Um, I guess that we really have to hurry and that we should make everything what we can do that not even improve teachers but as well integrate companies into the digital education of kids because otherwise we will never ever be quick enough uh, to really face the, the, the setting or the, the different surroundings. And so I just pray that in five years we will have lifelong learning with support of companies as well for kids. Right. So thank you three um, very, very much. Thanks to everybody on the project side. Thanks to our fantastic panel. Uh, thanks for, for sharing your time and sticking to the digital means during these 70 minutes. I thank you all very much. I think we... Did you invent? Uh, did you uh, like this event? Did you enjoy really, it? I liked it. I enjoyed it. It was okay. a lot of fun. It was a lot, of fun. a lot of fun. I don't <laughs> know if you say that every day <laughs> on your seat. Um, I like to have fun. <laughs> thanks, thanks to all of you for your great attention. So if you liked it, you may even share it again on hashtag BMI DigiTalk or in hashtag Meet and Code or on the hashtag Code Week. And I promise you there's more to come uh, at the Meet and Code. So please watch it on uh, the website. The URL is also uh, shown here, meetandcode.org. You also find the very participant 
participating countries there on the site in various European languages. You can connect and you find more information about the projects we have heard about. So thank you very much for your attention. Please stay t tuned with Meet and Code and of course with the EU Code Week in October. So thank you very much. And we liked the video so very much in the beginning before we started today. So we will show them again now. So thank you very much to our great team behind the scenes. You can't see Bye -bye. them. We can. Yes, we can. Make it possible. Yes, we can. Bye bye. <laughs> yes, we can. Thank you. <laughs>